Okay, if you watch some of the maybe air crash investigations or documentaries on the uh, British Midlands case, these are some of the words that come up that uh, we talk about in our class and that we, you know, we tell stories, we, um, we give a better context for the words, okay? And also like some of the mistakes that commonly happen. So notice um, is a verb, right? He noticed that she had gotten a haircut yesterday. She was quite happy about that. Right? It's like C. But notify is the one you want here. Can you notice me today before you leave? Um, we hear this, uh, Andrea and I both, we, we've heard this a lot here. So uh, we put this in here. Remember, notify is the verb. I need you to notify me of any changes before you leave today. Other meanings, heads up is very similar. Um, let you know. Uh, can you give me a heads up uh, before you leave today? Kind of like a warning. All right. Uh, can you let me know before you leave or before you go home? And that's notify. Now, notice is the uh, is the noun, right? So you come home, and the bank has put an eviction notice uh, because you you didn't pay you didn't pay uh, make your loan payments. When I came home, there was a notice on my door. I looked at it closely, and it was, it was an eviction notice, foreclosure notice. The bank is going to take my home. Um, we also hear in the video, or the, we have a two-week notice, or two weeks notice, you'll hear both. Um, before you quit your job, uh, you should give two weeks notice, usually in the United States. Not one day. <laughs> Not a one-day notice. Um, did you notice? Did you see the notice on your door? I thought this was kind of a funny statement. Did you see that no, that piece of paper on your door? Did you notice that on your door? Oh, no, I didn't see it. I, did, I didn't notice. Now, this is a good example of why C, because when you see something, you see something important or you see it quickly. Watch does not work here because it's not moving usually. All right? Did you see the notice on your door? Did you watch it? No. Mm. You can also say, "Look at." Um, did you look at it? Means, did you read it? But that's kind of a good difference between those those three. Um, see, watch, and look. Come in on short notice. Uh, Debbie was called in on short notice. On a short notice, I think works too. And I think in the video they say Debbie. She was on standby, but managers called her in on short notice, or also at short notice. I think the British say that. Foreboding. Foreboding is like a, a bad feeling about the future, right? Have a sense of foreboding. Now, this word I think is very formal, probably a little bit too formal. Um, it's something a, uh, a psychiatrist says, right, or a psychologist. If you have anxious feelings for a test, you know, things, things are going to go wrong, that's called anxious foreboding. But that's something more like a you know, a TV presenter or host or like a, a psychologist says, right? She had a sense of foreboding that the news would be bad. More of a written word or something you find in literature. Now, other ways to say this, I got a bad feeling about this. This is in Star Wars. Like, you know, several times you hear this. I got a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this. This is more common. Um, I had a bad feeling that something was about to happen, so I didn't get on the flight. I think that, that KLM flight, I think only one, the 1977 crash, only one uh, stewardess survived that, I think, because she didn't get on the flight. Um, I just felt like something bad was going to happen, or was about to happen. Ominous feeling is okay, too, but this is, again, it's usually like a, a word for literature. Now I did, if you put this in into the dictionary, you will get these sentences, right? There were ominous dark clouds. Or it's like, you know, you're driving at night, it's a very scary, scary hotel, okay, very dark. Uh, the Bates Motel here from Psycho. If you see this, you know, you get an ominous feeling and don't stay the night there, okay? Now if you put ominous clouds into Google, Google Images, you'll get these things. But usually a normal sentence would be, yeah, those clouds are not looking too good there. Those clouds are not looking good there, yeah. Okay. Cease means to stop, but it's very formal. Stop doing that. 
Yeah, okay, if you're the king, cease. <laughs> or if you're like a god, cease. Now, but we do have, um, now it is very formal, welfare, welfare payments cease as soon as the individual starts a job. You'll see that in laws, lawyers use that. All right. A secession of hostilities. But now, we do have this thing called a cease and desist letter. It means, you know, lawyers send this. And uh, maybe you remember um, Apple. Apple's lawyer sends a cease and desist letter to Samsung. Hey, stop copying our phone. And Samsung's lawyer sends a uh, letter to Apple's lawyers saying, hey, stop copying our phone. Um, Mr. Trump also, I'm sure he's sent plenty of cease and desist letters. <laughs> uh, our lawyer sent a cease and desist letter to him or her, but they kept stalking us. They keep stalking us. Stalkers get this. Now, sometimes, you know, cease and desist, cease and desist letters don't do much, but they are, they are common. Okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, about a 4 or 5. You'll see it in the news sometimes. Right. Now, we had some discussion about this state of the art, where we've asked, is the 787X, you know, the next generation, the, the newest aircraft, is it, is it state of the art? Well, according to the definition, the most recent and therefore considered the best state of the art, you know, technology. But recently, like, I think a lot of people just use this to mean the, mo the best technology, the most sophisticated. Boeing has it here as an adjective for their flight deck, right? The 787 Dreamer features a state-of-the-art flight deck. Um, so it it's probably has some old technology in there, but it's got some new technology. Um, as a pilot, what is your worst nightmare? What is the worst thing that can happen? Um, if you want to write something in the comment section, that'd be great. Uh, my worst nightmare is, def is, is definitely both engines going out, both engines failing. My worst nightmare would be both engines going out. My worst nightmare would be losing both engines. These are more hypothetical. Another way to say it, losing both engines is definitely my biggest fear. The loss of both engines is definitely my biggest fear. Again, with these sentences, you know, try and experiment. Put this part in here and um, experiment with the sentences with a native speaker. Uh, this one too, you're gonna hear this a lot in movies too. Uh, Rambo, who are you? I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, Batman says it too, it's in a lot of movies. Uh, our class, classes have had good discussions about this and Ohama, which I heard is actually a Japanese word converted back into uh, Korean, but I guess we say sledgehammer. Now this comes up, and uh, one of the passengers the one that they interview says this. All right, he says, it sounded to me as though there was somebody outside with a sledgehammer trying to get into the aircraft. It sounded as though, you can all say, it sounded like there was somebody outside with a sledgehammer trying to get into the aircraft. Right. Other ways to describe um, engine noise or damage, a clattering sound, <laughs> These are clackers. Maybe if you go to a football game, there's people swinging these like <laughs> clacking, clatter, all these work. This is a child's toy. Clacky, clackety, clack, clack. That kind of has that sound for uh, horses, you know, on, on the streets. <laughs> if you go to Texas, you can see a lot of rattlesnakes, right? Um, you can also use that as a, as, as a verb. It sounds like something's rattling around there, around in there. <laughs> Okay, a rattling noise. Grinding <laughs> works too. I don't know. I always ask people, um, "Did you know? Did you know that you grind your teeth at night? Do you know that you grind your teeth at night?" This one I know. All right. All right. There. Um, the AC duct is another one we talk about. AC ventilation system is also common. Here's my friend uh, John McLean crawling through a ventilation system. Now, a lot of homes, you know, my parents' house when I was growing up, uh, they had this, this uh, air conditioning duct on top of the building. But I think just in the movies, people crawl through this. I don't think in real life anybody crawls through the, uh, the crawl space or the AC duct. Um, our floor also had this ventilation too. If you're describing this case, what happened, uh, if you're summarizing it, you can say, you know, there was some problem with the AC duct. There was some confusion about the AC duct. There was some confusion concerning 
uh, the AC duct. They weren't entirely familiar with the 737-400, so they shut down the wrong engine. They were confused about the uh, AC ducts. And I think, and we'll, we'll have this at the end there, but I think it's the right engine was on the previous model. Um, and But now, you know, Boeing changed it, and it was in coming out of both. Um, the AC ducts came from both the right and the left side. Break apart versus fall apart. Um, very similar words, but maybe here's the difference. I always tell a story of a snowman. This is one of the videos from YouTube. This, you know, it's getting hot out, and the snowman's nose falls off, and his eyes fall off. He's a, so I say, ah, he's really falling apart there, right? Break apart is usually can be used for like uh, explosions for aircraft, that type of thing. Maybe a little bit more like machines and that type of thing. This is kind of like one piece falls, poof, another piece falls. Poof. In Star Wars, um, I think they sh they say the ship is breaking up. They, they use that too. It's so intense they feel the aircraft is breaking up, breaking apart, falling apart. All these work. Um, I, but for songs, and I think I, I don't I think I played this very sad song. His or her her life is falling apart. They lost the house. They got divorced. Their dog died. Their mom went to jail. This is usually used in country music, but. <laughs> I play that uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart song. Once upon a time I was falling in love, now I'm only falling apart. He went to his house and they went to their homes, right? Here's the thing about Heojida, break up, go our separate ways. Uh, at the end of the night, after dinner, we each went our separate ways. Break up here would be a bit too kind of, kind of strong or kind of weird. So it's a little bit better to say, um, go our separate ways. It's more common. I broke up with my girlfriend. Um, they broke up. A little bit stronger. But this is more common. Just like, good night. After dinner, you do this. Telltale signs. Right. What are the signs of a heart attack? Now, if a person is having a heart attack, they have stomach pain, maybe shortness of breath, maybe sweating, fatigue. These are the signs. But what are the absolute 100%, the telltale signs of a heart attack? Well, uh, the person is probably on the floor, okay, grabbing their chest, okay, in pain. Those are usually the telltale signs. Telltale, or everybody knows this. Now, here there's some other examples. Um, or this is from the video we watch. As the hours pass, Eddie Trimble, the uh, investigator, he finds none of the telltale signs of explosives. This is from the video. You can also say as time goes by, or after hours and hours and hours of searching, after endless hours of searching, um, he finds none of the telltale signs of damage from the explosive. He doesn't find any of the te telltale signs. Now, tell telltale on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 we always use it, 1 we never use it, that's probably about 3 or 4. But I have heard it in other news segments, like the, after the Manchester bombing, um, did they know it was a suicide bomber? Well, this video, telltale signs were investigators scrutinized um, by the UK. Uh, what are the telltale signs of arson? Arson, you know, somebody sets the fire on purpose. Firefighters, firemen, firefighters, if you want to talk about them being brave, firemen, uh, firewomen, <laughs> they usually, um, they find multiple points of origin. That's a telltale sign. There's incendiary devices there. Those are all telltale signs. Another example of this is this The Telltale Heart. The Telltale Heart is a story by this author, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, it's kind of a very uh, violent story, but I would say I think most American high school students would probably know this story. If you put this into YouTube, um, there's, lots of parody, there's lots of parodies of The Telltale Heart. Um, I also found a, Span a Spanish uh, version. And this is the uh, the Korean description from Wikipedia. So I would say it's it's one it's a classic of American literature. Right. Scour scour means you know look closely, look for, look very. They're scouring the the crash site. Right. I found this in other um, news news sources. Uh, you know, this rescue team rescue team scour Indonesia um, after the plane crash. Right. Scour the countryside. You can also say, I looked everywhere for it. I can't find my watch, my keys. 
what'd you do this weekend? Oh man, I looked all, I looked everywhere for my for my wallet. You know, I scoured the countryside. Uh, bands, rock bands, always need a drummer. They often have to scour the countryside <laughs> to find a drummer. Second meaning of scour was like wash, you know, like scrub or wash the dishes. So I told a story like I had a part-time job washing dishes in high school, and Saturday night I had to wash mashed potato pan, pots and pans, and they were dirty. We say this is caked on, right? So we had to scour or scrub the pans for about 30 minutes. Again, if you put scour the pots and pans, you get this. Boy, cake, like the food, the verb caked on means lots of it. Or a person who wears too much makeup. Usually a girl, sometimes a guy. Well, you really caked it on, huh? Um, here's a picture of mashed, mashed potatoes, just in case you were confused. Um, you know, summing up the case, you can say, in Captain, in Captain Hunt's experience, the air conditioning on the 737 is powered by the right engine. He assumes uh, that is where the smoke is coming from. You know, assumptions, thinking we know something, just, you know, thinking we know it is not always the truth. So here's some examples. We have to be very careful with assumptions. We should be very careful with assumptions or when making assumptions. Have to, remember, is stronger. Should, less. But if you, if you say should, like in a scary way, oh, we should be very careful when making assumptions. That, that sounds very strong. And I played this video. There's a few versions. You should never assume. Because when you assume, you make a boop out of you and me. You make us look foolish. And I told the story like my high school speech teacher, Mr. Schlemmer. Um, I hope you listen to this, Mr. Schlemmer. <laughs> uh, he used to say that all the time. Here's an example. Not all Koreans like kimchi. All right? That's an assumption. Now, some assumptions are safer than other assumptions, but we should be careful. OK. Hesitate, um, you know, pause is usually a good meaning, but hesitate is kind of a bad, sometimes a bad thing. Um, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, um, no, just ask me. It's okay. Ask us. Oh, getting back to summarizing, um, this point I brought up in several, several of our meetings that, you know, the LED, the dial, it swings around, right, around the outside. On the previous version, it was inside. But I ask, if we put out in there, it swings out around. Bo both of these sentences work, but this one is kind of more in this direction, out and around. Right? So they needed, they should have had better training, or you know, they didn't, they didn't pay attention to this detail because they weren't properly trained with it, evidently.